I, 27 male, confronted my girlfriend, 30 female after she accused me of cheating on her. She sent me proof, but it looks fake. A bit of backstory because it will be relevant later. My father was very abusive. He used to beat me with a belt and call me names. He used to believe I was a product of my mother cheating on her. I never met my mother. Other family members told me she died when I was a baby. My father told me she killed herself. My father died when I was 17. I told my girlfriend about this because I trusted her at that point in a relationship, and she did help me and was understanding. We were in a relationship for two years. She owns the house. She paid for most of things, and I paid some bills and for food. We both are financially stable and independent. She earns more than me, but that was never a problem. We loved each other. A friend circle is huge, and then it has more friend circles in them. Like a Venn diagram, everyone at least knew each other's face. First day. So on first day, my girlfriend came home late. I thought she was with her female friends. She didn't acknowledge me and went straight into the bathroom. When she came back, she started cursing at me. She never cursed at anyone. Then she started calling me a cheater and other names. Then she threw my plants on the ground. I froze. It kind of triggered something in me. She then told me to leave. So it took some important stuff. And left without saying anything. I then called my buddies. Let's call them M and M. They are a gay couple. We were friends for a long time. They let me crash at their house and gave me a bed to sleep. Kept me away from alcohol. They told me to take a break because I was a mess. They also told me that maybe she cheated, and this is all just a cover-up. Then they invited me on a trip to their parents' house in a small village. I called my manager and asked for leave, which he approved. Next, I checked Facebook. She posted that she broke up with me, and now she's with D. Accused me of cheating on her, and called me names. I was done at this point, so I deleted Facebook. It's kinda turned into a small movement because some girls started to tell their experiences too. Someone on Reddit told me to at least ask her for proof. So I asked her, she sent me Tinder conversations where it looks like I am flirting with one of her friends and she sent me a photo of her with love bites on her. Those conversations look forged after me and Eminem compared them with real ones. I was very angry. She did all of this without even checking them. So I posted them on Facebook and called her out. Some people took my side. She again became very angry, trashed my stuff in her house, and posted them too. Now this became childish. My friends agreed too because they were acting like teens and talking with them is not going to solve this. I just gave them my phone and told them to give it back to me after returning from my trip. I was happy at that point. I felt like I dodged a bullet. What happened on Facebook? My buddies are my guardian angels. After giving them my phone, they reported them for cyberbullying or harassment. They talked to others. Made a few posts and videos. People initially didn't take my side because I didn't say anything. Stand for yourself, people. The girlfriend's friend circle then started calling me gay because I was living with them. That was homophobic, so nearly everyone just stopped giving attention to them. And here's the update. We left the house the next day for their parents' house. It's in a nearby small village. I enjoyed it, and it helped me to forget everything. We were there for two days. Their family is very supportive for them. I got special treatment because they thought I was their third partner. Which is kinda wholesome. We left their house and told me some quite interesting things happened back in the town. They told me to think many times before taking any decisions. They gave me my phone back and told me my girlfriend tried to call me. When she called on their phones, they picked up. She told them there was a big misunderstanding and she is sorry and now she wants to talk with me. I was hesitant at first, but it was a good opportunity to at least know what actually happened. So I called her right there because I wanted to end this. She tried to solve things there, but I told her I will only talk in person in a cafe. 
and if she told me everything, honestly. She agreed. We met in a cafe after returning, but he's waited for me in a car. She tried to hug me and started crying. I didn't let her. We sat down and started talking. She told me what happened from the start. So two months ago, she got close. To this group of girls. Let's call them the inner circle. These are the kind of girls who make fun of protagonists in those American teen movies and dramas. Then there are two girls in the group. Let's call them L and T. I never met L and T personally. L hated me to the core. According to her, she deserves a real man. Because I'm not ripped and earned less than her. L kept manipulating the girlfriend for a month, and other girls helped her. So days before my girlfriend kicking me out of the house, L and T made a plan. They created some Tinder conversations where it looks like T and I got matched, and I was flirting with her. She showed them to my girlfriend the day before she kicked me out, which made her furious. According to the girlfriend, it worked because they were manipulating her for a month. So they told her to take revenge sex, kick me out later, and show me my place. They hooked my girlfriend up with a guy. Let's call him D. D has a small business in town and he looks like one of those male undergarment models. D was unaware of the inner circle's plan. He only knew that I hurt the girlfriend, and he wanted to help her. Also, D had a thing for my girlfriend. And he was only interested in a few hookups. My girlfriend, on the other hand, thought he was interested in a long-term relationship. So they had sex that day. She returned home and kicked me out. D moved into her house the next day. They again had some fun. Took some photos to send me later. Everything was going normal until I'm a homophobic rant. My girlfriend changed her relationship status on Facebook. And added his name. Which caused some confusion for him. It turned into a small fight. And because everything that inner circle plan was based on lies and you have to make a thousand lies to hide one lie. That small fight turned into a huge fight. T was done with the drama and confessed what they did. T didn't want to humiliate me. Just wanted the girlfriend and me to separate. When D understood they used him, he felt disgusted. He hated cheaters for some reason and wanted to teach me a lesson. Which still is a bit messed up considering he did revenge sex. He left her, went silent. Girlfriend left those girls too. She told me she was very angry and sad at what she did. She also posted on Facebook that it was just a big misunderstanding and deleted the older posts. She also told others to do the same. She told me to be together again, and she will fix or buy some new stuff for me. She told me she gave me permission to sleep with whoever I want, and she will even help me to hook up. I responded. I don't want to be with you anymore. You hurt me. Even if you got manipulated, you hurt me and told personal trauma to others, and a single guy doesn't need his ex's permission to sleep with someone else. This is the last time we were meeting, and I don't want you to contact me ever. You can keep what is left of my stuff. Goodbye. I left. Paid for the coffee. I didn't look back. She started to cry and scream, I guess. People were staring at me. I got an M&M's car. And left. That was a few hours ago. Why I did this? Because it's not going to work. I hate her for how she handled it and hurt me. Every time I will be with her, I will imagine her with a bloody belt in her hands. She acted childish even though she was an independent adult woman, which were a lot of red flags. I will remain single for the rest of my life instead of living with someone who hurt you. What was my fault? I didn't stand up for myself. I should have on the first day. Stand up for yourself even if the devil is himself standing in front of you, but not anymore. I will approve myself now. I'm still young. I'll find someone in the future. What am I going to do? I'm going to talk with a manager and ask him to transfer me to another city. A new start will be great. All right, time for some community comments. First up, Banda Taco. Her story is a lie. Nobody has ever successfully asked some random unknown dude off the street to immediately bang and move into their home for free. The reality is that she's been secretly banging Guide 2 at Guy 2's house, 
but now he's coming over to Ops for the first time. But oh, no. Guy 1 his home. Gotta get rid of him quick. Oh, no. Guy 2 will wonder why Guy 1's belongings are here. I'll say he cheated and... I threw him out. Now she can hide the affair from Op since he's been tossed out and or justify having an affair saying that it happened during their short-term misunderstanding. Soon, Guy 2 arrives at his girlfriend's house, sees another man's belongings, dumpster. Op, get an STD test, and do not go back. Here's a comment from I love Eminem they're my favorite part in reading your experience, OP. You're lucky to have such loving, supportive friends. It must feel humbling to know you have friends who got your back no matter what. Something your ex will never have. I'm disgusted that your ex and her friends would resort to homophobia in order to bash you online. Heck. That is a whole deeper level of vile. And insidious behavior from your ex's part, regardless if she was directly saying anything for herself. That would be my number one reason to have nothing to do with her. I'm shocked that people in her 30s would have the audacity to display that nonsense this day and age. It's 2020. Jesus Christ. She owes M&M a direct apology as well. I'd say it was a blessing in disguise that this friend group broke you guys up. I'm so sorry you had to relive trauma from your past because of this woman and her friends, though. Even though you may feel bad about not defending yourself initially. I feel separating and removing yourself from the drama was the best course of action for the sake of your mental health. I have so much respect for either way you handle this and great job standing strong against adversity. Our next comment is from Christopher1393. You dodged a major bullet man. Even though she was manipulated, she clearly has no trust for you. She didn't listen to your side. Didn't question her friend who was flirting with you in the fake screenshot. Slept with someone else before she broke up with you with the intention of entering a long-term relationship with him. Use some very personal abusive traumas to hurt you. Spread the lies online. Trash your stuff. Try to make you jealous. Move the guy in immediately after kicking you out. She then tried to just forget everything and guilt you into getting back together with her. Better something like this happen now than when you're married and had kids. And our last comment from Tam Bam Wong. Yeah. Her story is BS. For one. The only reason her friend hated you is because of how badly your girlfriend talked about you. They were just picking up what she was laying down, but she was cheating with this guy for a while. Your girlfriend had a hand in making those screenshots so she could go public and save face. I mean, seriously, he freaking moved in with her but didn't want a long-term relationship. After knowing her for a day, but already had a thing for her. He wanted to help her out and took pics to send to you after moving his stuff into her house, but he wasn't aware of the plan. Yeah. There's more loose ends in her BS story than AF. I don't even know what, but there's one major truth to all this that she couldn't manipulate. She only wants you because he doesn't want her.